In this video we're going to talk about solving radical equations. Now a radical equation is just an equation that involves a radical, a thing like a square root or a cube root. And we're going to look at these examples, uh, part A, B, and C in this video, and we're going to solve these. So the question is, how do you do that? How do you find the, uh, a value or the values of x that will make uh, a radical equation true? Well notice uh, in part A, uh, the radical is already isolated all by itself on the left hand side of the equation. In parts B and C that's not the case. We have the radical but we have something else along with the radical. So in parts B and C we're going to want to isolate it. But let's let's begin with uh, part A. We have the square root of 3x plus 1 equals 4 and again the radical is already all by itself on one side of the equation and what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides of the equation. Okay, We'll square the square root to get rid of the square root so we just get 3x plus 1 is equal to 16. 4 squared is 16. Now subtract 1 from both sides. We get 3x is equal to 15. And so x is equal to 5. Okay, and it's always a good idea to check your answer. Is it really the case that the square root of 3 times 5 plus 1 is equal to 4? All right, so we plugged in 5 for x. Yeah, because the square root of 16 uh, really is 4. Okay, so that worked. Now in this next equation, it's going to be a little bit more involved. We have 5 plus the square root of x plus 7 equals x. So what we want to do first of all is subtract 5 from both sides. So we isolate the radical. The square root of x plus 7 equals x minus 5. And now that it's isolated, we want to square both sides of the equation since we have a square root. Okay, and when we do this, we get x plus 7 on the left-hand side. And on the right side, we get x minus 5 times x minus 5. Okay, and we're going to have to FOIL that out. right? So x plus 7 is equal to x squared, and I believe it's minus 10x, and then plus 25. Okay, now how do we solve this? Well, this is just a quadratic equation. We want to get 0 on the left-hand side. So if we subtract the x and subtract a 7 from both sides, we're going to get x squared minus 11x because right, we have the minus 10x and another minus 1x, and then we'll have plus 18, because right, we've subtracted 7 from both sides. Now this one, we could uh, try to use the quadratic formula to uh, solve this quadratic equation, but I think uh, this one uh, does factor. In fact, I think it factors to be x minus 9 times x minus 2. If you FOIL that out, you get x squared, you have a minus 9x and another minus 2x, that's minus 11x, and minus 9 times minus 2 is plus 18. So notice our two solutions are x equals 9 or x equals 2. Okay, now the thing is that we have to be a little careful. Let's check our solutions. And we didn't do anything incorrectly here. Our work is, is correct. But let's check our solutions to see if we get the correct answer. It turns out I think one of these is going to be a fake solution, right? What's called an extraneous solution. So if we plug in x equals 9, notice we get 5 plus the square root of 9 plus 7 is equal to 9. And the question is, is that true? Okay, well this would say 5 plus the square root of 16 is equal to 9. Is that true? Well, that just says 5 plus 4 equals 9, and clearly that's true. Okay, so when we plugged in 7, we get, or plugged in 9, we get a true statement. Now let's plug in uh, the other solution here, 2, to check and see is it really a solution. Okay, we do, when we plug it in, we get 5 plus the square root of 2 plus 7 is equal to 2. Okay, we're plugging it in for x in the original equation. And this says 5 plus the square root of 9 is equal to 2. So this says 5 plus 3 equals 2. So that's correct, right? No, of course it's not correct, right? 5 plus 3 is not 2, it's, it's 8. So actually what we have here is uh, an extraneous solution. So even though we didn't do anything wrong in solving this, uh, the 2 uh, was not actually a solution. Now the issue is here, the square root of 9, uh, we say it's 3, but there's actually two numbers that if you multiply them together you get 9, uh, five, uh, 3 and negative 3. And if we had, uh, if the square root of 9 were allowed to be negative 3, then 5 plus negative 3 would equal 2. Okay, but by definition the square root of 9 is uh, positive 3, so this uh, isn't true. Okay, let's do one more. Notice the, the big thing in this one is that we have a cube root, right? We have a cube root of 6x plus 9 is equal to 
Well, if we subtract 8 from both sides, it's going to equal negative 3. Now, you might think, well, that's going to be impossible, right? We can't take a root and get a negative number as an output. Well, we can't get, take a square root, right? Like the square root of 25 is equal to 5. The, the square root of minus 25, you're going to have to use imaginary numbers, right? But the, the cube root, though, of something like minus 8, okay, the cube root of minus 8 is minus 2. Because minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 is negative 8. Okay, so you can take a cube root of a negative number and you can get an output of a negative number. All right, so what do we do in this case? Well, instead of squaring both sides, we're going to raise both sides to the third power since we have a cube root. Then the left-hand side will just be 6x plus 9. The right-hand side is negative 27. Okay, if you subtract 9 from both sides, you get 6x equals negative 36, and so x equals negative 6. So I rigged these problems up to give us nice whole numbers as a result, but sometimes you have fractions and, and things. But if you plug this in, negative 6 in, you'll see you get a true statement. In fact, if you plug in negative 6 for x, you'd have negative 36 plus 9, that's negative 27, and the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3, and negative 3 plus 8 really does equal 5. So it really is a solution.